whatever works. It was a compilation, so it was late 50s, early 60s. 50, 50 years ago. 50 years ago. And you can hear it, and it sounds as fresh and as new as when it was recorded. Amazing thing about cassette tapes. Now you have CDs that do that. Some of us still have vinyl records. You guys remember those? Mm hmm. Yeah. Don't have a player anymore. I have two turntables. One of them actually takes the LP and turns it into MP3 files <laughs> that you get thick and ripped. And some, some of you are sitting here saying, what in the world are we talking about? <laughs> it's all, all generational. Because things change. How we reproduce things change. How we reproduce sound has changed. From vinyl back originally from cylinders. You guys remember those? Nobody, nobody, uh, you've at least seen pictures of them, right? N none of us are, except Tom. None of us <laughs> are old enough to remember Edison's original cylinder. I ain't going there. I ain't going there. <laughs> but uh, we changed from that, and then we changed into LPs. We changed to cassettes. Now we've got DVDs, and now on the MP3s, and they're even coming up with new generations of newer things. All to reproduce sound. Now we as Christians need to reproduce Christians. God has told us to make disciples. And there's been all sorts of ways to do that. Churches as they were in the book of Acts. Churches as they existed in the Middle Ages. The Dark Ages time of the Reformation. Baptist churches started in, in, in England and Europe. They came to America and changed how they did things. Now there's Southern Baptist churches and there's American Baptist churches and there's General Baptist churches and there's General Regular Baptist churches and there's Irregular Baptist churches and all these other Baptist churches. <laughs> all supposedly for the purpose of reproducing Christians. As I said earlier, Rip Van Winkle went to sleep in 1950 and woke up yesterday. He wouldn't even know what to do with this. He would recognize the vinyl. He would recognize this, let alone an MP3. It's magic. 
He would think Ella Fitzgerald got struck down and put into one of those little iPods, little chips. He has no idea what to do with it. So reproducing sound has changed in the same way that as we look at who we are as a church, how we go about making disciples, how we go about reproducing new Christians changes because we have to meet them where they are. We have to be able in this day and age to talk to an MP3 generation. If we talk to a MP3 generation in cassette tape lingo, we've lost them. We're talking a language they don't understand. We've got to meet people where they are and then introduce them to Jesus. So think about that when you see old cassettes and old LPs. When you carry in four or five boxes of LP albums into the pastor's house, when you do it? Two. At least four. Well, I don't know if they moved Jeff in your albums or not. But at least four. <laughs> only, only two of them were mine. That's all I know. When, whenever you run into those old, uh, that old technology, think about that. That we, we, we have a generation out there of new technology. We need to reach them where they are and share the ageless message of the gospel with them in a language they can understand. You going to sing again? Mm -hmm.